Hello everyone and welcome to 700 Club Nigeria. You know what? I have been looking forward to this day all week and I think Susan has been too. Of course you know I have because you know what? Why? 700 Club Day, blessing day. Mm. <laughs> you know the blessing is not just about talking. Yeah. It's also about what we drink on set sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah. I see you've been drinking. <laughs> no. And most importantly, mm -hmm. the fact that you work, you come up from set yeah. and you hear those profound testimonies, True. you hear those very touching True. stories, and most importantly, the partners of 700 Club Nigeria. Yeah, they are the uh, real heroes. Exactly. How much people give mm -hmm. to see people's lives being transformed True. and all that. So I, I look forward really yeah. to each time we come on set to just talk about this life transforming stories absolutely absolutely mm. and would love to welcome you to this refreshing episode of 700 club nigeria yeah so before we delve into the business of the day here is a testimony from one of you our dear viewers oh. abiodun and she says my daughter sat down on a pen pointing upwards and it pierced her bum ouch now soon after she fell ill oh dear. the testimony is I just want to thank God that she's fine now Hallelujah. and no damage came to her body. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. I was holding my breath there because I was so scared. You know, Susan, when I first read this story, I cringed because yeah. I, just the thought of what that imagery looks like. I'm even still cringing right now. It's, it's so painful. <laughs> but the good thing is, like thank she said, mm. I'm happy no damage came to the little girl. Hallelujah. And she's fine now. Hallelujah. And give Praise God, all God the praise. for his mercies. Thank God. Absolutely. Thank you, Jesus. Absolutely. Sometimes the wonders of God cannot be put in words. Mm -hmm. God never fails in his promises concerning us. He has said our days on earth will be fulfilled, so let's hold on to his words. Think about it. The fact that we go to bed every night and wake up every morning is enough to be thankful for. Now, you got to meditate on that, and we'll be right back. You know the saying that beauty is an eye of the beholder, right? That basically means that People's opinions of what is beautiful differs. I have just one problem with that expression. It focuses on what people have to say about what is beautiful. For me, beauty is a state of mind, is knowing, is understanding that in spite of what people say or what people think, I am beautiful. It's celebrating my uniqueness and what makes me different from every other person. That thing I would say that people would say, oh my God, no other person would say it this way. No other person would think like that. That's the Sarah way of thinking. When I was growing up, I used to have very, very, very low self-esteem. I thought my nose was too big. I thought I was too short because in secondary school, I always had to stand in front of the line. And I wasn't comfortable with that. I was stout, a little bit fat, chubby. Other girls were slim. And I kept on comparing myself to them. And this image never let me appreciate myself or who I truly was. Never made me feel comfortable in my own skin. As I grew up, I began to understand myself. I began to listen to myself talk. I began to read and just, you know, understand the way I function. And that brought me to a place where I started to appreciate myself for who I truly am. There's no other person with the same DNA as I. It's like God created a mold and he made me and he destroyed the mold. So there's no one else on this planet that's ever, ever going to be like me. I'm unique and that's what makes me beautiful. My name is Sarah and I am beautiful. Welcome back. You know what? God has gifted us with so many creative skills. For some people, it's in writing. To others, it's in molding. And the list goes on and on and on. Even the clothes we have on, we have on right now are as a result of someone's creative designs. But before now, some of us only thought of these things as a hobby. But the lady we are about to see took hers from a hobby to a tool for empowerment. And at some point, she was the official makeup artist for this very program. Here is Evelyn Abraxan's story. The 21st century woman, described as bold, strong, active, and even competitive. Though swamped by several responsibilities, one of the things the woman has excelled in through the centuries is her incredible ability to remain poised and graceful even through tough circumstances. Hi, welcome and thank you for joining us. Some of her secret weapons? A radiant skin on a charming makeup. 
In today's complex and beautiful world of makeup, one person has helped several women utilize this secret. Evelyn Abraxan is one makeup artist that has carved a niche for herself, and her amazing makeup tricks has endeared so many women to her. My slogan is simply same you. You should look to be natural. If you have um, blemishes, you want to conceal that. You don't want to go overboard and then eventually you start looking like a scarecrow or someone that looks like you. Well said from a pro. You see, for Evelyn, beauty is not just skin deep. Every woman is born beautiful, pretty. All makeup does for you is just enhance that beauty that God has created. Ironically, being a makeup artist was not even Evelyn's dream. My number one dream was to be a sailor because I loved their uniform. Then I wanted to be um, an electrical engineer and then end, end up an accountant. I started to play around with makeup. I didn't think of it as a business. I thought of it as a passion. So I was just doing makeup for my friends for free. It was pure passion. What started as a hobby and a passion soon evolved into a vocation. With training, practice and persistence, Evelyn blazed new trails in the makeup world. And now she has launched her own unique brand called Barriots. Barriots, I would say, is your go-to makeup because it's affordable and then it's easy to use and then it considered the typical black skin. So, and above all, it's, uh, it's not loud makeup. They're natural things. The brushes are very smooth. They're not synthetic. Amazingly, the Barriots brand has an exceptional message behind it. I had John 316 written on my brand to remind us that if there was no God, we will not be here. You want to meet people, touch their lives, and not distract them from the fact that a God exists. And Evelyn's life is doing just that. She said makeup is simply one of the tools she uses to showcase the Jesus that lives in her heart. From experience, I have learned a lot of patience. I have learned self-control. You know, a lot of people will be surprised, like, are you sure you're a makeup artist? What planet did you fall from? Because I don't get angry. I smile through whatever situation is going on. Everything you do, if you're godly, it will be seen. You don't need to talk about it. And her products are making an even greater change. I want to create an opportunity for people to own small, small businesses by way of distributorship, you know? Or people that are out of school, waiting for youth service, or even students that are in school, you know? Sell this product, make a little gain, take care of yourself. I do free classes. A lot of makeup artists do not understand why I want to spoil business for them. But I mean, as a Christian, I believe not everything is about money. You should uh, impact people's lives by your way of life. If we make everything about money, then the essence of our existence is lost. And so, though shrouded by many responsibilities, Evelyn says everyone, especially today's woman, can positively influence our society. I also work, I'm an accountant. I juggle all of that as human beings. You have two hands, you have two legs, you have no excuse. So just live one day at a time, trust him for grace, do your best as a human being impact people's lives, show people love. No matter how small it is, show people love. And concerning your unique dream, Evelyn says, I didn't just wake up and get barriers. It was a dream. 
The Bible says, though it tarries, it will come to pass. So back to my John 3, 16. God so loved the world. He gave. What was he given? That which he had. His begotten son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish. Put that in your business. What is, what is it that you have in your hands? What do you want to do with it? Do you want to be selfish and keep everything to yourself? I'm sorry, you will not succeed. You may have superficial success. If you don't impact people's lives, it will, it will crash. You know what, Patrick, it's amazing that if you put God in the center of what you're doing, no matter what it is, that God can prosper it and make it right. It can, who thought that makeup could reach people? I mean, just know? think about it. From yeah. Sailor, <laughs> which was the original <laughs> desire, yeah, yeah. to becoming a makeup artist. Yeah. Not just an artist, but also a teacher True. of some sort. Mm -hmm. And she has also gone into production of, of makeup products. Right. How else can God just take your dream right. or change your trajectory in life and mm -hmm. say to you, this is what my will for you is. Yeah. And that's why he says, my plans for you are plans of good and not, and of, not of evil. If you will just yield yeah. and allow God's will in your life, so just like Evelyn, yeah, so it's that so was, profound. That was it's a so very beautiful story being told. <laughs> Sometimes we find ourselves caught in the web of our desires. And we forget that those desires may not be what God actually wants for our lives. Jay Williams' story of misdirection, birth from listening to the voices in his head, is one that is worth being retold. He did as he had desired until he discovered that following God's desires for his life offered something better. Here is his story. And we're just pretty exposed to the alcohol, the party, and the violence, and what have you, so it, it's just um, um, a small little den of the devil. Jay Williams grew up in this tough neighborhood, and he says two words describe it so well, poverty and evil. There isn't any bright future there, in the sense that um, the people you look up to, because we know about living a life of example and all that, you really don't get good examples there. All you just get is bad, you, you could just see children growing up with good dreams, but shattered at the middle of the road. Back at home, Jay's parents were not good role models either. Both of them were really engaged in alcoholism. They saw how it brought them down low, and that created bitterness, that created hatred, because I started hating people. I started hating my parents too. Jay wanted a better life for himself and his family. He wished God would smile on them and make their situation better. But when nothing changed, Jay turned his back on God and sought comfort in other places. I was hot inside, comparing myself with other people that I meet in schools or some places out there and all that. And so I became very, very stubborn. I just found myself, you know, going from one girl to the other. The time that I started, you know, getting involved with ladies, they should be around that age 16 thereabout. Better known to Jay, Bitterness, anger, and illicit sex began to open his heart to something sinister. I just started hearing voices in my inside, and the voice began to speak to me about how to do, how to act to people, how to respond to certain things around me. And when somebody gets at me, the voice would just tell me immediately, you know what, you retaliate. And everything that I pronounce would happen to the person. So immediately I just do that. After a short while, the same thing I said would just begin to happen. So it was like, you see, I got you back when nobody else will and all that. So it, it, it just became my companion. But everything that the voice told me to do was just evil. I just couldn't think. I just couldn't be that intelligent. I was as dull as anything you could think of. The spirit of lust kept on coming at me. At that very young age, I couldn't just control myself anymore. I just started leaving it. But during his final year in secondary school, something remarkable happened. Ken, one of Jay's wayward friends had become a Christian and he repeatedly told Jay about the love of Jesus Christ. To me, it was like a miracle. Like I know Ken, we did all the bad things together. I felt like he got drunk on something uh, and all that. And it was really a miracle. I thought he was pretending 
but after one day, two days, into months, and he's still the same person, I just knew that he had something that I didn't have. <laughs> Though Jay admired his friend's new life, he mocked the idea of giving his life to Jesus. However, Ken persisted and finally, Jay agreed to attend a Christian youth camp meeting with him. I saw beautiful ladies and I just, you know, this is kind of like an opportunity for me to go get some and all that. So it was that idea and it was a Christian gathering and we just had this mentality that Christian girls are quite good and all that. So. But during the camp meeting, the word of God was clearing the darkness in Jay's heart. The second day a preacher came in and he began to preach the word of God. And he was just preaching my life from page one down to the very point I was at that point in time. And he was really striking. He was really telling me that I could do better. He was really giving me a hope that I lost. And he was so different. There was just this love. Something was really drawing me. And I just realized that it was actually the love of God doing that. And I came out to give my life to Christ. And God opened Jay's eyes to the vanity of wayward living and illicit sex. And he said, look at the ladies. And I just looked at the ladies and something really wonderful happened. You know, ladies normally have hair and all that and they just went bored. The boy just said, okay, is that all you're after? He said, all these things are vanity. That was really my huge turning point and immediately I just held on the gospel. I didn't want to look back again. From then on, everything about Jay changed. Back home, he began to read his father's Bible. Even though his old friends laughed at him and his neighborhood still held great temptations, Jay chose to honor God with his life. Some of the ladies I went out with would come at me really with heavy temptations. It was really a terrible scene at that point in time. But what really kept me was actually the Word of God. I didn't know that. And the more I kept on studying, I just realized that I was oblivious of the present um, surroundings around me and all that and the voices of people kept on getting lower and fading away and more of the scriptures you know coming alive and all that. Jay's new life also brought new beginnings. He graduated from secondary school with good grades and gained admission into the university in Nigeria. But once on campus he went back to his old ways and even earned the reputation of being the ladies man. When I got to school, I felt like I could do it on my own. Like I've known so much of God that I could stand and all that. And all of a sudden, from nowhere, I just felt alone and the school swallowed me. Didn't go to church, any Christian activity, I didn't want to go. But in his second year in school, Jay rededicated his life to Jesus Christ. Today, over five years after, Jay is still strong in the Lord and through his godly lifestyle, countless others have come to know Jesus. Jay still lives in his old neighborhood, but his new life has become a beacon of hope. Immediately accepted Christ, I saw that all those things that I would struggle to get, you know, he had already provided. On the cross of Calvary, he gave everything to me. So he just expect me to live in the reality of it. I saw myself in life that I knew that I have no problem with poverty. We don't meet, we don't cross paths. I saw myself living a glorious life. Jay is also a youth pastor with a strong desire to reach teenagers and young adults with the gospel of the kingdom through music, dance, and poetry. Your voice be sweet melody, my soul you have won. Jay has started a program, Spoken Word Movement, where he provides mentorship to young adults, teaching them to use their gifts for God's glory. The spoken word movement is a community whereby we go on outreaches and we bless people's lives, we teach the word of God via poetry, and as the word keeps on coming out, we trust that the Lord would accompany them with signs and wonders and people getting healed and saved and their hearts getting mended. Although he reaches out to young adults, Jay says he's passionate about teenagers. I love teenagers so much because um, that was actually when the Lord, you know, got me and he instructed me to go back because I had like um, streams of experience. So he wanted me to use the experience and tell them that actually God can actually take you through out of that. Some of them didn't even have hope for the future. Some of them just felt like after secondary school, you know what, that's over for me. But most of them right now in university, most of them are preaching the gospel. Most of them are heavy ministers right now. Most of them are not even up to 20, but they're still really holding on tight. And they're doing what somebody in 40 will do for God.
and for everyone going through trying times, Jay says, If you see your life really going down like my mind did at that point in time, just realize that something is fighting the greatness that is actually in your inside. But if you stay with He that created you, that knew you before He formed you in your mother's womb, I tell you, you see life coming alive. Can't you just realize that where you are at the moment, you can't even reach a finger to even your next door neighbor. But I tell you, you meet Jesus, that settles it. Wow. What a story. I mean, how else, how else can you describe a life where you grew up in a neighborhood that breeds nothing but bitterness, anger, um, unforgiveness, all kinds of life that does not reflect who or what God is and what he stands for. And then God, at some point in your life, just like Jai's life, helping you to rediscover yourself to fulfill destiny and to fulfill purpose. Today, just like Jai, I mean, I don't know where you're growing up in. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know what is going through your mind even as you're watching us. But you see, if God can use someone like Jai to begin to preach his word with a talent that is inborn in him to replace that bitterness, that anger that has always been there, that life of waywardliness, following girls and drinking, God can do the same with you if you would just yield and just submit to his will. And you know what? It doesn't matter how bad it is. It can only get better if you just succumb and ask God to come into your life today and help you be a better you. You can even do, be more than Jai Williams, like we've seen and heard in his story. Shall we pray? Dear God, we thank you for such profound stories that we're hearing, that we've seen right now. We thank you, Lord, for the many Jais that are out there watching us right now and making decisions to change for the better, making decisions to take what the devil has taught for evil and using them for good to serve you. Heavenly Father, we pray this day that, Lord, as you transform the lives of young men and women from wherever they are to be world changers, to be generational thinkers, world changers, people who make our world a better place. Lord, we pray that may many more like him discover themselves and be willing tools in your hand. May they be vessels of honor unto you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for as many as are making decisions right now to change. You will help them make that decisions easy in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Listen, don't go anywhere just yet. 700 Club Nigeria, we'll be right back. Welcome back to 700 Club Nigeria. I hope that watching today's episode has opened you up to seeking God's will for your life. Mm. That is if you haven't been doing so before now. You see, from Evelyn and Jaya's stories, we can see that nothing or no one is useless to God. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Yes, indeed. And if you are confused mm -hmm. or in need of some counseling, please, do not hesitate, give us a call right now, right now or send a message to any of the numbers or social media platforms displayed on your screen. We're available to you all day and all night. Yes, we are, and that is because we love hearing from you. Well, this is it for today, but before we go, here is another reminder from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Mm -hmm. Make these words a memorial in your life, and you will enjoy peace of mind. Till next time, goodbye, and God bless you. 